Okay, let's look at another one, um, a truth table with more than two premises. So this is going to be a big truth table. Determine whether the argument is valid or invalid. If Pat goes skiing, then Amy stays home. If Amy does not stay home, then Cade will play video games. Cade will not play video games, therefore Pat does not go skiing. Wow, that's a lot to sort through, right? All right, so in order to make it simpler, we change it to symbols. So we're going to let P represent Pat goes skiing, Q will represent Amy stays at home, and R will represent Cade will play video games. All the other statements can be written as negations of one of those or some kind of connective uh, involved with one of those. All right, so... Here was the statement, if Pat goes skiing, so that's P, then Amy stays at home, that's Q. If Amy does not stay at home, so not Q, then Cade will play video games, which is R. Cade will not play video games, not R, therefore, big line, Pat does not go skiing. Okay, so first, hopefully everybody can see how we got this argument translated into symbols. Now, how do we test an argument using truth tables? Well, we have to join the premises together with ands and then create a great big conditional statement, a great big if-then statement. So in this case, we would have P implies Q and not Q implies R and not R. All of that in brackets implies not P. Okay, so do you see what we've done here? Right, so we took this guy and we joined it with an and to this guy. And we join that with an and to this guy. And then we took that whole compound statement and we joined it with an arrow to the not P. Right, this bar is like the arrow. And we joined it to the not P. So you join all of your premises together with ands. And then you put great big brackets arrow not p so one question i might ask you on the test is what statement would you analyze in a truth table in order to test the validity and this is how you would construct that statement so we're going to analyze this on the next slide so i've copied the statement to the top here and notice that there are three components p q and r Whenever you want to know how many rows you are going to have in your truth table, remember these are the rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. How do I know there's going to be eight rows? We know this because there's a little formula that says that you raise two to the power of the number of, row, of components, and that tells you the number of rows is eight. Two to the third power is eight. It's just like when we had only two components, we got two squared equals four rows. If we had four components, we would get two to the fourth equals 16 rows. But in this case, it's two to the third power equals eight rows. Notice that the first half, which is four of them, are going to be true Oops. for P. And then the second half are going to be false. And then if you split that in half, for Q, you're going to do half true, half false, and then half true, half false. And then the third one is just like before, the last column, you're going to have true, false, alternating. True, false, true, false, true, false. Okay, so let me say that again. You know that you're going to have eight rows because it's two to the third power because it's three components. Of those eight rows, half of them are going to have true for P and half of them are going to have false. Then, out of the ones that are true, for Q, half of them will be true and half of them will be false. 
and out of the ones where p is false, q will be half true, half false. Remember, our goal here is to list all possible scenarios. And if you look at these truth values, they're all different. There's nothing, no scenario is repeated. Like for example, this top row up here is all trues, and that never happens again. The bottom row is all falses, that never happens anywhere else. This one is true, a P being true, and Q and R being false, that never happens anywhere else. By following this pattern, we get all the possible scenarios exactly one time. Okay, now let's do our column headings. So to create our column headings, we are going to follow the rule that you first do any negations of any individual components. So I'm going to do not P, I'm going to do not Q, and I'm going to do not R. We need all three of them because in our great big giant statement there, they each get negated somewhere. Then we're going to work inside any parentheses from left to right. So the first set of parentheses I see here is P implies Q. And then another set of parentheses I need is not Q implies R. All right, now we need a column for analyzing this connective and the first and. So we're going to have P implies Q and not Q implies R. And then we're going to have all of that plus the and for the not R. So we're going to have P implies Q and not Q implies R and not R. And then we're going to have the this connective here, but I'm just don't have room, so I'm just going to write the whole statement. Okay, so take a look and see if you see where I'm getting these column headings from. Notice that we had uh, three components, one, two, three. Those were, we have a column for each of those. And then we have how many connectives in our statement here? Because we should have a column for each connective as well. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different connectives and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different columns for those connectives. Okay, so let's start filling in truth values. I'm going to number the columns again. So we have column one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, and 11. Okay, for column 4, we're going to use column 1 because all we're doing is negating P. For column 5, we're going to use column 2 because we're just negating Q. And for column 6, we're going to use column 3 because we're just negating R. So let's go ahead and fill in the opposites of all these truth values. And now we're going to look at um, the other connectives. So column 7, we are going to have, uh, for column 7, we're going to have to use which two columns? Good, 1 and 2, that's right. P implies Q. And remember, what we're looking for is the rule is only false if we have a true and then a false. So we're going to use 1 and 2, and we're going to use this rule. So we're looking for, in columns 1 and 2, where do we have a true and then a false? So I see that happen here. I see that happen here. So only in the third and fourth rows are we going to have a false. Everything else is going to be true. Okay, how about column 8? Which two columns are we going to use to analyze column 8? Let's see, we have a vote for 5 and 3. Very good. 5 has not Q and 3 has R. And notice we're going in that direction. Not Q being true and R being false would calls, cause the whole statement to be false, all, column A to be false. So we're looking for um, a true in column five and then a false in column three. 
So going from column five to column three is going this direction, right? So we're looking for any trues in column five, check if they lead to a false in column three. And where I see that going down, I see a true in row three, but it points at a true. I see a true in row four and it points at a false. So that's gonna be a false. I see a true down at, in the seventh row, but it points at a true. And then I see a true down in the eighth row that points at a false. So that's gonna be false. Only false when we have true then false. Everything else is going to be true. Okay, let's look at column nine. Which connective are we analyzing for column nine? And by connective, remember, I mean and, or, not, and if, then. Um, I see that you're telling me that in order to get column nine, we need to analyze columns seven and eight, and that is absolutely correct. And which rule, we're gonna use seven and eight, and we're, we're analyzing this connective in the middle here, the and, right? Good, Christy. All right, so what's the rule for and? An and is only true if both are true. So we're going to look for, in column seven and column eight, we're gonna look for two trues. So looking down column seven and eight, where do we see two trues? So in column seven, the first row we see two trues, the second row two trues, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh. All of these are gonna give us trues and the rest would be false. So now we're going to do column 10. And for column 10, we need to take what we just got in column nine and join it with an and to the negation of R. So we're going to be analyzing or using, okay, we're going to be using columns nine and six, because we're joining with an and the heading from column nine to the heading from column six. Okay, now again, the rule for and is we wanna look for where they're both true. So going down columns nine and six, where do we see two trues? I see one in the second row, we have two trues. And I see one down here, we have two trues. And that's about it. So those are the only places we're gonna have a true. And then the rest are gonna be false. And now finally, we're to the whole statement. So, so far we have analyzed all of the stuff in the big square brackets and we got that in column 10. And then we need to analyze this arrow, this conditional pointing towards not P, which is column 10 pointing towards column four. So we're gonna use column 10 and column four in that order. And remember the rule for the conditional is if we have a true in column 10 pointing toward a false in column four, then we have a false statement. Otherwise it's true. Now notice that in column 10, which is the antecedent column, there are only two trues. So there are, those are the only even possibilities of having a true false scenario. So what we're going to do is we're going to look from column 10 back to the not P column. And we see here, that points towards a false, but this one doesn't. This one points toward a true. We have a um, false here, and then we have trues everywhere else. Again, how do what, what was our goal? We're trying to uh, test the validity of this compound statement of, well, actually, I'm sorry, of this arg of an argument by analyzing the truth values of the compound statement. If the compound statement turns out to be a tautology, then you have a valid argument, and otherwise it's invalid. This one is not a tautology because there's one false that we got here. 
So that means that the original argument is invalid. Because the final column does not contain all trues, the statement is not a tautology and the argument is invalid.